Hey, good morning, Faith Bible Chapel. Uh, hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well, and uh, all of our staff is doing well. So just wanted to give you a quick little shout out to uh, just share something with you real quick. When I was listening to Pastor Bob's uh, message last week, one thing that he mentioned was like, this is a time when we're going to war. And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that really in, in trying to frame what's going on in the United States right now, I think that's probably the best way for us to wrap our mind around the idea of what it is that we're facing with this uh, current virus. Uh, it's really kind of reminiscent of the plagues in the Bible. It's probably the closest we've ever come in our lifetimes to seeing what that kind of looked like. Uh, so really, I think what we need to understand is as we look at this, is that we need to look at this just as our ancestors did in World War II. When we were fighting the Nazis, we knew that this was something that didn't just endanger Europe, it endangered all of us. For the first time in our experience, the enemy that we faced hasn't been something that our brave military faces overseas. This is something that lives in our midst. Uh, we have people that we love right now who are tested positive. Fortunately, nobody is in any serious danger at this point. But with that, we need to realize that we do have an enemy among us, and it's this COVID-19 virus. And so in keeping with that, I think that we need to mobilize a lot like the people did in World War II. Uh, we all need to do our part. First and foremost, we do need to practice social distancing. We need to keep washing our hands. Uh, we need to do everything we can to keep the burden on our medical um, professionals from getting any heavier than it already is. Second, we need to support our medical community. We need to be there for them in prayer. Uh, we need to be listening when they need an ear. Um, I've been in contact with some. I believe Pastor Bob's been in contact with some. But we need to be there for them because they're the ones who bear the emotional trauma in so many ways. Third, we need to be there for the families who are being directly affected. We need to be there in prayer. Uh, our prayer chain, I know we've been very active because of different things that are going on. Uh, that's something we can do. Uh, most importantly, we need to be in touch with one another. I want you to, and I've been saying this all along, and I'm going to keep repeating it, we need to be in touch with at least five people from Faith Bible Chapel, in addition to our family members and other loved ones, every week to make sure that they have what they need. Everybody needs just a friendly voice to, to reach out to them and show them what uh, that they're cared for. And so I'm going to challenge each and every one of you again, uh, call at least five people during the week. You can do that. Uh, we can do that without exposure. Most importantly, we need to take care of those who are uh, much more vulnerable, uh, those who are older than us, those who have asthma and other um, syst uh, systemic allergy type things, those who are basically struggling with immune deficiency. We want to be there for them. And here's a simple thing that you can do. I realized this just the other day when uh, we were going to the store, is before you go to the store, ask somebody who is a lot more vulnerable than you if they need you to pick anything up. Just, you know, when you're on your way to the store, hey, can I pick anything up for you? Do you need anything? Uh, since you're going to go anyway, you might as well pick up one or two more things if it's available. Um, and then finally, uh, we want to keep, keep everybody here in prayer. We want to go to war against this virus. We want to pray that God stops it in its track. Uh, God is not surprised by this. I, he didn't create it. Men in our sinful condition, this is a result of it. It's just something that happens. It's been happening for millennia. And so this isn't anything new. The Bible says don't be surprised at this uh, trial that you find yourself in. This is what's expected. So with that, don't feel sorry for yourself, but rather uh, choose to take a plan of action and make a difference. Uh, on a different note, I also want to remind you that we're going to have communion at the end of service uh, this coming Sunday for Easter service. I'm very excited about Easter service, but with that, we are going to... Uh, finish the service with communion. So you want to have the elements on hand, grape juice and uh, maybe some, some uh, crackers or, or matzah if you, get, if you can get that. Um, at the very least, you can use bread, but you want to make sure that you're ready so that when we finish the message on Sunday morning, that we as a body, and please tell your friends, I know there are a lot of people who would love to see what's going on, and, uh, and invite them to join us online so that we can have finish the message on Easter the day of glorious hope, with, with communion together as a church family, include friends and other loved ones so that we can celebrate the resurrection together and in unity. Thank you.